Okay, go produce. Here we are for the reflection series finale. Welcome back. My name is Big Lou. This is Go Produce. This is the podcast where we explore how music industry professionals turn their passions into profit. This is exactly what I'm doing, and this is what I want to help you do as well. In this episode, we're going to be focusing on how to be effective within the music industry. And we talk to different professionals within TV, within radio, within public relations. Some of them are educators, and some of them work with apps. Make sure to check in every single Wednesday to not miss one episode because we're coming at you with new information every single week. So go ahead, hit subscribe right now so you don't forget. And then also listen to the end where I've got three main takeaways. You do not want to miss that. Let's go. Alrighty, so we're featuring Jay Hodgson, Dalton Higgins, Dondrea Ira, Mercedes Kaja, and Josh Simons today. It is so, so important to be connected to your community. And the funny thing about community today is that it can be your next door neighbor or it can be anywhere else in this world. It's truly a global community now. This is really fascinating, but at the same time, it's very daunting. We're gonna kick it off with Josh Simons who tells us the importance of connect, create, and control. Connect, create, control is, is really trying to be a fairly literal explanation as to what you can do in the app. So, you know, the first thing you do is you connect with someone, then the idea is you create something new together and then control refers to our recently released publishing and distribution feature that just allows folks to control their whole career basically from one ecosystem as opposed to like having your distribution on CD baby and you're publishing with song trader. You can do it theoretically or well, you can do it practically. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so that that'll give you distribution and there's also royalties involved in this that is claimed for the artist. Uh, so if it's distribution, then we're just passing through 100% of the royalties. Um, that was something I was really passionate and dogmatic about achieving when we were negotiating those sorts of deals. So if, yeah, if you do distribution through Vampy, you will get 100% of your royalties paid through. Um, and publishing, I think the current split is 75-25, uh, which is probably the best that you'll find on the internet. Um, so that's... Yeah, it's different different royalty rate for the different two different products. You heard it from the CEO of Vamper himself, Josh Simons, and the team over at Vamper have been able to solve a huge issue that music industry professionals have been having, and that is the issue of networking. It is now easier to connect, create, and control with the use of this app. This app is called Vamper App. Check it out right now. I use it, and it's spectacular. I do not regret signing up with it one bit. That being said, it doesn't have all the answers. So what if you do run into a couple of hurdles? What if you're trying to network outside of the environment provided by the app? Maybe this form of networking requires sending emails. Dondrea shares with us how to be more effective when emailing specifically music supervisors. I always tell people, obviously know who you're emailing. I've gotten so many times where it's like, hey, I, I watched the show that you supervised. I loved it. And I didn't work on that project. I'm like, do you even know who you're emailing? Like, mm -hmm. get your people straight, get the project straight, maybe watch some of the things that these yeah. people worked on and include a streaming link and a zip to a download link. And I'll tell you why. Both of these things are very helpful because every supervisor works differently. So some people prefer to download right away and throw it into their iTunes or whatever player they're using and listen to it later, where other people want to stream it first, to see if they like it, and then you know maybe they'll download it. By providing options, you're saving a step of a supervisor having to ask you yeah. to send you those things so you just want to make it as easy as possible uh and when i say zip link like a link to download like dropbox or google drive or we transfer there's a great program called disco if no one has heard of it it's amazing you can use it as a media player but you can also include your metadata on it which is very important when pitching your songs to anybody you need to say if you are a one-stop shop basically meaning you own your master recordings and you own the publishing rights and a contact info, like an email address to reach you. Because if, for me, I personally like to download stuff. If I hear a song a year from now or six months from now in my library, and I'm like, this is what I've been looking for all day. Who is this? And there's no contact information. And I have no way of reaching that person. And I'm definitely not going to waste my time trying to find them on the internet. If you want to take it a step even further than that, I'd recommend you signing up for Grammarly, which is a free grammar checking service. I won't go into more detail promoting them unless they're trying to pay me because I'm about that. <laughs> 
So we've touched on a lot about communication within the industry, but what about outside of the industry? It is obviously so important as a brand to maintain communication with your potential market. But tell me, when was the last time you considered who your market truly is? Jay Hodgson shares with us that you have to understand that the next generation is probably your market. But you also have to understand that the next generation is probably your market. It's yeah. smart. It's brilliant. It's brilliant well, because they're going to grow up one day. That's right. And they're the market that you're likely to reach. The market yep. that you're looking at now, you're actually that market. Yep. So this is something that I always talk with my students about. They often want to do what's really popular now, and they'll change themselves up to, to reach sort of that. Uh, and it's really like a kind of pandering. Um, and that market's already passed. You know, that's already been made and packaged and marketed and promoted. There's something else coming up uh, and coming through, um, always. And so you, you really have to look to what younger people are doing, because they're the ones that are going, that's the audience you're going to solidify. And that's going to be your audience in the future. If you're running your artistry or your brand like a business, you must always be progressive. You've got to look to the future. You have to be open and comfortable with change. As the future unfolds and change happens, we're learning more about a recently launched music program at Ryerson University. Dalton Higgins shares with us why the music program at Ryerson University came to be. This idea of being able to tour acts and book acts to play at major facilities and venues. So there's an actual job category attached to that and training attached to that. So, so these are the types of things, right? We talk about even getting your music out there and being working at a DSP, right? Digital service provider, Spotify, Apple. There are so many jobs in these different areas of the music industry, but I, I get the sense and we get the sense as people on the advisory committee and, and some of the staffers and professors and TAs is just like, yeah, let's train people for these jobs that exist now and also train them for jobs that are going to exist five years from now, right? So we want to be futurists. We're looking towards the future. What I find now in the Canadian music industry, it's a lot of, it's a very uh, cliquish and stuck in the 80s and it's not very diverse. It's And it's, and it's singularly focused like, when you're a rapper, let's say you're doing so-called urban music in Canada, if you do rap or R&B or any electronic-based music, um, what parts of the industry are there set, are set up for you in Canada? It's not a lot, you know? So, so we're going to sort of take those energies and say, hey, um, in 2020, the biggest selling acts, it's like top five, it's all rap and R&B. You know, I don't know if you know this or not, right? But yeah, the top selling musics around the world, I don't mean in Canada or North America, it's just rap and R&B, right? So that's not open to debate and that's not arguable. You can just Google that right now and you're going to see Bad Bunny and J Balvin, Drake, Weekend. That's hip hop and R&B dominate music around the world. I know this is going to elevate the Canadian music industry and I'm excited to watch this all unfold. And as fun as the business side of music is, it's important to remember why the music was created in the first place. And that's simply is for the love of creating and sharing music. We do it for us, but we also do it for you. Here is Mercedes Gaja, and she shares with us the importance of supporting the arts. Keep supporting the arts, keep supporting music. You like support that musician, buy their album, you know, pay into whatever live stream they're doing, watch their live stream, share, like, you know, it's, it's incredible how much of a share and like goes a long way because it helps us as an organization not only attract sponsors, but, you know, justify through grants, um, you know, work with media partners, etc. Uh, but in the end, first and foremost, our work is based on the artist. So the artist needs that support as well. So keep supporting the arts like, oh, my gosh, please. <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing that I can say to so many people is that it's can you imagine going through any kind of turmoil in our lives as we just have without music? I feel like I need say no more because she touched on that so well. With the review of our guests from seasons one, two and three done, I want to hit you with the three main takeaways from that reflection. And then we can talk a little bit more on what's next. What can you expect after the reflection series? which begins next week. So here we are. First main takeaway, network. Take that extra meeting each day. Just one meeting each day can make a difference. You've got to start meeting new people. You've got to reinforce the relationships that you already have with the people that you've met. Don't forget about them. It's not, a just, it's not just about new. It's about strong, meaningful relationships. Main takeaway number two, be professional. People will notice the extra effort you put forward. Make sure that email is written nicely. If you're an intern and you have to clean a bathroom toilet, make sure that toilet is cleaner than any other toilet bowl they've ever seen. That little bit of extra effort goes a long way. Main takeaway number three, and this is for all music lovers out here, 
support the arts. Art is life. Art is everything that you do. A sandwich is art. Movies, Netflix, that's art. The chairs that we're sitting in, this was designed based off of the art of our body. That's, that's a little much. <laughs> I got a little carried away there. But art is life. Art is everywhere. Make sure to support the arts. Do what you can to do that. It doesn't mean throwing dollars at people. It means sharing. It means liking. It means commenting. It means going to shows. It means thanking them for the work that they've done. Any little thing adds up and it really does go a long way. Support the arts. Do what you can with it. My people, here we are. We've reviewed the three main takeaways from the episode. Now I'm gonna hit you up with a little bit of what is next. What can you expect for season four of Go Produce? Well, we're going back to the regular interview styled episodes. We've got another full season of totally new episodes and new guests coming your way over the next couple of months. We're also working on completing our first ebook and a couple of other resources that we can help you learn a little bit faster. And you can expect a slightly different format for the episodes in season four. We try to change it up a little bit. We want to keep ourselves on our toes and we figured why not uh, try and have some fun with it. I do want to know though, after season four or outside of season four, what would you like to see us do next? Is there somewhere you want us to go and explore a little bit further? Also, something else that I want you to be putting in the comments is feedback on the Reflection series. What did you think of it? How can we do better? Did you like it at all? Do you want to see it again? Should we try it something differently? I'm very open to all of these suggestions. Let us know in the comments. You can even send me an email personally at l-o-u-i-s at goproduce.ca. That's Louis at goproduce.ca. Feel free to shoot me any feedback around the Reflection series, what you want to see moving forward outside of the Reflection series and outside of season four, because, because we're, we've got a lot planned and we want to make sure that we're delivering appropriately. I also want to remind you that by August of 2022, we are going to be the largest music industry podcast in all of Canada, if not before then. All of this is tremendously exciting for me. I hope you are at least a little bit excited about this because why wouldn't you be if you're turning your passion into profit? Let's be real here. Let's do this together. I have no doubt in any of us, we've got this. Big shout out to all parties involved. Shout out to Prevail Media Group for the beautiful facility and the support, continued support throughout this whole experience. Big shout out to all of our sponsors who have yet to come, but maybe, maybe we see you in season four. I have a feeling we do. And lastly, big shout out to our viewers. If you had all learned anything, please go ahead, hit that like button, hit subscribe, hit the little bell notification because we release episodes every single Wednesday. And it also really helps the algorithm do whatever it does so that we can reach more people so that we can all turn our passion into profits. I very much appreciate you joining us all the way through to the end of this episode. I will see you next week with the beginning of season four. I'm very excited for this. That's it. That's everything. We out. Ooh.